Hi, I'm Nick Parsons with Hasty Bake, and today we're talking about fire management 101. Whether you've had a grill for a long time or you're a brand new grill owner, managing your fire, getting good clean airflow, making sure you're using the appropriate and, the, and quality charcoal uh, is going to be a key to making sure that you're cooking the best food possible on your Hasty Bake. So we're going to roll through some basics of fire management today. Hopefully by the time we're all done you'll have a lot better understanding of how to burn a clean, uh, efficient fire in your Hasty Bake and get the best food possible. First thing we're talking about is airflow. Airflow is absolutely essential when you're cooking on your Hasty Bake. When you have bad airflow, you have a smoldering fire, you get bitter smoke, you get puffy white smoke, it turns your meat gray, it's not a good situation and you don't want to be dealing with it. So the key number one with fire management is making sure you have adequate airflow. You always want to make sure your vents are open. You never close the vents off completely because your fire needs air. The three things that fire needs are oxygen, heat, and a fuel source. So as we're going through this, oxygen is number one. We always make sure that the vents down here and on this side of the grill are open. Now depending on if we're smoking or grilling or how long we're going to be cooking, those vent positions may change and we'll cover that today. The other thing we want to make sure with airflow is that you're using quality charcoal, you're using quality hardwood for your smoking wood, you don't want to be using the cheapest thing on the shelf, you don't want to be using something that's been exposed to the elements or, uh, or is old or damp or anything like that. You want good, clean quality, dry charcoal, dry hardwood that's going to burn incredibly efficiently. The other thing you want to make sure, and as you know, one of the benefits of Hasty Bake is you have the adjustable firebox. When you're lighting your initial fire, you want to make sure that there's enough room on the height of your firebox so that air can come in through the vent and breeze across the bottom of your fire. If your firebox is located too low, you're not going to be able to get air into your fire and your fire is going to smolder and create bitter smoke and you'll probably have a hard time getting the temperature up to. The next thing we're going to talk about is vent adjustments. Every Hasty Bake is equipped with an intake vent and an exhaust vent located in different positions based on your model. Your intake vent controls the amount of oxygen that gets into your fire, thus the temperature of the fire as it rises. Your exhaust vent controls the speed of the air and the smoke as it exits the chamber and directly relates to the temperature bringing down. If you want to increase the temperature of your fire, you're going to start in quarter to half inch intervals and open up the exhaust vent on the intake side. That will ingest a lot of air into the firebox and cause that temperature to rise. If you want to lower the temperature, the first place to start is the exhaust vent. As by closing that vent down in quarter to half inch intervals, you slow the draw, you slow the amount of air speed that is, that is rotating in your chamber, and it directly relates to the temperature of the fire. You can also control heat temperature by lowering and closing the exhaust vent, but you never want to close it all the way because a closed exhaust vent is not allowing oxygen to get into your fire, and as we talked about earlier, that will cause a slow burning, smoldering, dirty fire, and you want to keep a well breathing fire to make sure that you're getting the best quality product off your hasty bake. The next thing we want to talk about is how much charcoal to add in your firebox. Now this varies based on whether you're grilling hot and fast or you're smoking low and slow. Some people add too much and they end up either having too hot of a fire or wasting charcoal or they don't add enough and they're constantly feeding their fire. We want to start off with a good medium amount of charcoal which in my mind is about half the width of your firebox, about the height of the firebox. A firebox sits about three inches off so you got a three inch base of coal halfway across is a good place to start. If you're smoking and we'll talk about a little, a little bit later on, uh, that's the width of also your heat shield. So that way your charcoal doesn't extend past the heat shield and burn your meat. If you're grilling, you can spread that out a little bit, but the idea is doing about half the firebox width as high as it goes. As we talk about building our fire a little bit later, we'll talk about making sure that we're using the appropriately sized charcoal. But one thing you want to know when you're building a, a charcoal bed in your firebox is when you have a lot of charcoal powder, the powder that breaks down from charcoal as it, as it gets smaller, it gets thrown around in the back of a warehouse, that powder builds up and can actually snuff out your fire. So one thing we want to do after we dump the charcoal in and kind of concise it up to half the box is when it's inside the rack, I like to give it a little shake and get the rest of the charcoal dust down, distributed down into the ash pan. It actually is beneficial, as we'll talk about later, having a layer of charcoal dust in the bottom of that ash pan, but it also allows room for air to flow through your charcoal and not get snuffed out by powder. 
The last couple things we want to talk about when it comes to direct airflow is the type of model that you have. When it comes to gourmet and continental models, you have to realize that the hood has a bifold lid, which has a lot larger opening than the, than the opening on a legacy. So you're going to naturally get more airflow into that hood. You may have to compensate by that by dropping your vents a little bit more than you would on a legacy model. It's not a flaw, it's nothing wrong with it, it's just the way that the grill works. When it comes to a legacy model, you have to be aware that when you open that hood, you're now injecting tons and tons of oxygen down into your fire that you're not injecting when you're on a gourmet or a continental model because it has solid walls. So you have to be aware that your fire can jump pretty substantial in temperature the longer you leave that open and you may have to compensate with your vents. It's just the nature of cooking with charcoal. Now one warning we always want to make sure we give you is that when it comes to charcoal cooking, more oxygen equals more heat. Unlike a gas grill where all the heat comes from a gas burner and the heat never changes until you turn the knob, the hotter charcoal gets, the bigger charcoal gets, the more oxygen gets put into the fire, the larger the fire gets, and it can get dangerous. So never walk away from a charcoal grill, never leave it unattended. If you're grilling with a lid open, make sure you're paying attention to the size of the fire. You can use our lift mechanism to raise, lower that fire as necessary to not only change the temperature that your meat is getting, but also to drop the fire down if it starts to get a little large. But please be aware that when you leave that lid open and you're cooking with charcoal, you have the chance for a grease fire to start if you're not paying attention. So never leave it unattended. That's just the nature of charcoal grilling.